typically, we almost always think of the gut as just a, a digestive organism, right? To, to digest and deliver the nutrients of our food to all the parts of our body. And we don't think of it as a defensive organism. And that's one of the new concepts that you really introduce in antiviral gut. Why is it important for the gut to be defensive? And I'm guessing it's fighting all of these viruses because we don't have hundreds of viruses at the same time. They're not acting out, let's say. We're not actively sick. So how does this defensive organism work, uh, our gut? There are a couple important pieces to it, and we can go through all of them, but the ones that I want people to remember are the gut immune connection, stomach acid, the gut lining, and gut bacteria, those four. So let's start with the gut immune connection. You know, when I was in medical school 30 years ago, (laughs) over, and I had a fantastic medical education at Columbia, but this whole idea of the immune system, it was a little bit ephemeral. It was like, you know, it's these, these antibodies and killer T cells floating around, but I didn't have a good sense, and I don't think my classmates did either, of where they were. Well, it turns out that somewhere around 70 to 80% of your immune system is physically located in your gut. So where in your gut is it and why is it in such close interaction with this other stuff? So let's get to point number two, the gut membrane. And this is a, this is a concept. I've been a gastroenterologist for 30 years. And I I have to tell you, I did not think about this until about a decade ago. The fact that when you eat food and it's in your gut, it's not actually in your body. It's in this hollow tube that runs from your mouth all the way down to your anus. But it's a hollow tube that is really in constant interaction with the environment. So your GI tract is open to the environment. And in order for it to get inside your body, it has to go through the gut lining, which is a razor thin one cell membrane that separates everything in your gut lumen in the open part of your gut, which is outside of your body, from everything in the inside of your body, all your innards, your liver and your spleen and your lungs and your kidneys and your immune system. Because on one side of that razor thin lining, we have the trillions of microbes And on the other side, we have all the different immune cells that are doing their thing, that are making antibodies and remembering the bad actor who got in two years ago and is back again. And now they're like, aha, I remember you from two years ago. That that acquired immune system is going to remember it. But that interaction between the gut microbes and the immune cells across the gut lining is a hand and glove relationship. And I like to think of the gut microbes as air traffic control for directing the microbes. And I'll give you a really good example of how this works. There is a gut bacteria called Bacteroidetes fragilis, b for short. And b is a common gut microbe, and it's involved in doing surveillance. So when it sees a dangerous virus come along, like Ebola or SARS-CoV-2, it literally kicks the lining of the gut. It sends a signal to release something called interferons so-called because they interfere with viruses. Mm -hmm. And then interferons signal other immune cells. And then you get this whole immune cascade designed to fight the virus. And BFRAG does this for viruses that are dangerous. But if it's a harmless virus, it's like, okay, stand down. So you start to see then that if the microbiome is disrupted, if you don't have enough BFRAG or the gut lining is unhealthy, you start to see all these points where things can really break down. So I've told you now, we've talked about the microbiome, the gut lining, the immune system. Number four, stomach acid. Something that people think of as such a nuisance, one of your most important host defenses, it unravels and denatures viral protein, literally rendering it inactive. And for so many of us, the virus gets in through our digestive tract. We swallow it. So all the people out there who are taking proton pump inhibitors those acid-blocking drugs that shut down the proton pump. We had a really important study from 2020 that showed that those drugs can make you two to fourfold more susceptible to COVID. Antibiotics too, for the reason you just mentioned, right? They're going to kill off a lot of the healthy bacteria. So, so much of of creating an antiviral gut, Alexandra and Dotsy, is really about not doing the things to sabotage it, right? It's not about like what's a magic probiotic or supplement. Mm -hmm. It's about a lot of it, looking in your medicine cabinet and saying, am I blocking my stomach acid so it can't protect me? Am I killing off my 
bacteria with antibiotics? Am I poking holes in my gut lining with non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs? And really being clear on the risk-benefit ratio for some of these pharmaceuticals.